Joe here from Wildstorm Addiction. It's been a while. Let me take you on a little trip down memory lane. Summer 2010. I got to attend San Diego Comic Con for the first time ever. It was everything I dreamed of and so much more. But more than that, I was going to be meeting some friends I'd made on the Wildstorm message boards, which was an active forum at DC's website at the time. We planned to visit the Wildstorm booth and attend the Wildstorm panel that weekend. My friend Ben Murphy and I had already been running the Wildstorm Addiction podcast, which was born of the Comic Addiction family of podcasts at the time. We also ran the now defunct Wildstorm Resource Wiki. To say we were big Wildstorm fans was an understatement. Everything was poised and ready for the weekend and the con was absolutely perfect. It was a godsend knowing now what would be announced just a few months later. At the time, the Wildstorm imprint was 18 years old and was just about to become an adult by our standards, but its life would be cut short. In order to understand the end, let's go back to the beginning. Ah uh, yes, the 90s, when my days were spent playing my Sega Genesis, listening to Nirvana, and waiting for the next episode of X-Men the Animated Series. 1992 was also the year that seven artists left Marvel Comics to form Image Comics. Each Image founder had their own studio under the Image banner. Wildstorm was artist Jim Lee's studio. Lee launched his flagship title Wildcats Covert Action Teams and with it came massive success. That was followed by trading cards, toys, and even a Saturday morning cartoon. Other titles followed, such as Stormwatch, Gen 13, Deathblow, and Backlash, just to name a few. But Image's corner of the Comic Kingdom was not without its challenges. Late books and accusations of characters being ripoffs of existing characters plagued Image Comics as a whole. Being a studio founded by a group of artists, many critics claimed the company was all flash and no substance when it came to their storytelling. Then the late 90s came and it was a scary time for the comic industry. In the early 90s, there were books selling in the millions. However, in 1996, Marvel Comics filed for bankruptcy, and although it did not cause them to shut down completely, it was a harsh wake-up call on the state of the industry. Each studio at Image Comics had their dedicated following and were focused on surviving these turbulent times with their own respective plans. Then in 1999, Jim Lee took his Wildstorm imprint to DC Comics, effectively breaking up the band at Image. Now under the umbrella of one of the big two in comics, Wildstorm's future looked bright. This new era for the imprint saw the launch of a new iteration of the Wildcats. The Stormwatch title gave way to the Authority, and new critically praised titles were birthed such as Planetary and later Sleeper. This time period saw several different relaunches for titles with varying success, and that also included creator-owned and licensed properties. But it wasn't until 2006 that the imprint's next big event would hit. Wildstorm was supposed to be a reboot of the Wildstorm titles and would see the return of Jim Lee to his creation Wildcats with Grant Morrison helping guide this new direction. This was accompanied by relaunches of Wildstorm titles both old and new. However, both flagship titles, Wildcats and The Authority, only released one and two issues respectively. Other titles from the launch continued on their own, but some argue this was the last straw for a lot of fans, and Wildstorm never seemed to fully recover afterward. <laughs> Who 
What would end up being the final relaunch under the Wildstorm imprint debuted with a trilogy of stories, Wildstorm Armageddon, Wildstorm Revelations, and Number of the Beast that led to the World's End storyline. This storyline would effectively see the end of the world in-universe with a scenario that would leave the Wildstorm's Earth decimated. The storyline would see the heroes deal with the situation in a rare story where an end of the world scenario wasn't going to be fixed with an easy solution. Now let's head back to Comic Con 2010. The Wildstorm panel came and went with lots of great information about where the World's End storyline would go. After the panel, I approached Vice President and General Manager of Wildstorm Productions, Hank Canals. I remember asking him if he could tease any other info for the future of Wildstorm, and his response was the first sign that something was wrong. It wasn't the words he said, but more his body language, like when you know you have bad news to deliver, but you can't divulge it yet. At the time, I brushed it off as him just being professional and not being able to share anything. Boy, was I wrong. When the news broke, my podcast partner Ben and I were devastated. We had stuck by Wildstorm through thick and thin, but now the end had come. I had met Wildcats writer Adam Beechin at Comic-Con, and he later shared that it killed him not being able to share anything about Wildstorm shutting down while he was at the con. But he and fellow writer Tom Taylor did their best to wrap up the Wildstorm universe as Tom released the final issue of The Authority that December. And what became a very appropriate gesture, the final Wildstorm Universe issue was Wildcats number 30. And so it ended as it began with Jim Lee's original team. But then... In 2011, DC Comics launched the New 52, and it gave Wildstorm fans hope again that Wildstorm could still exist even if it was in a different form. That year saw a whopping 52 new titles released. Among the 52 were three titles that focused on Wildstorm characters, Stormwatch, Grifter, and Voodoo. Other characters soon showed up in Superboy, and the Ravagers. We even got a new iteration of Team 7 complete with their own book. But, again, slowly each title faced cancellation, until there was little to no Wildstorm characters on the stands anymore. For a time, the characters would pop up in random DC projects, but that's all we would get of them in the meantime. Then in 2017, writer Warren Ellis was given the keys to the kingdom as he brought us The Wildstorm, a reboot of the Wildstorm characters on an Earth separate from the DCU. It was planned as a 24-issue series and even spawned a 12-issue spin-off featuring Michael Cray, aka Deathblow. Both comics successfully finished their planned issue count. That was to be followed by a Wildcats miniseries, but then... <coughs> it was cancelled before it released. And with Ellis now facing accusations of sexual misconduct, there's no telling if DC will task another creative team to return to this version of Wildstorm in the future. For now, the characters that were folded into the DCU continue with guest appearances. If there will ever be another organized effort to feature any of these characters in their own title remains to be seen. Mm -hmm.